Hello everybody, welcome back to After 9. Uh, appreciate all the subscriptions recently. Um, we're going to be going over the S7 amp miner that we recently hooked up and how to put it on a mining pool so that you can share in the proceeds of the hashing power from your new ant miner. So we'll get started. The um, first thing we're going to need to do is figure out what your ant miner's um, IP address is. And, and that's basically pretty easy if you know how to get to your um, wireless router's uh, information. But uh, so to do that, your, your router's IP is usually 192.168.11. If you type that into your browser, um, it will take you into your router's login screen. You'll have to uh, enter your username and password and it will give you information uh, that you're going to be needing. Um, so in my case, I already knew my ant miners thing. So we're going to go right into your wireless router. Your wireless router will tell you it's very specifically because the ant miner calls itself the ant miner. Um, in, in my case, it's 192.168.1.6. So it's just basically the sixth device that's connected to that particular uh, one. But um, so I would type that in up here and it will give me a login screen. So once I get to the next part, it's going to be the login screen that looks like this. Um, if you bought yours used and sometimes you can't read the directions, um, basically just type in root and root. Um, that's the default that comes with it. You can reset it to whatever you like. Um, it doesn't make a difference what you make it because you still have to log into the network to get access to it. So um, next, there's a picture of your S7, hopefully. <laughs> if it doesn't look like that, it's not an S7. Um, here's the main screen once you get logged in. So you're going to have system, minor configuration, minor status, network, and then some other things, administration, monitor, kernel log, upgrade, and reboot. If you're doing upgrades, I recommend you make a copy of the current system just in case you mess it up. Um, reboot, kind of handy. I'll show you that later. Um, so this is your basic um, software for your for your um, miner. So once we once we have the miner basically logged into, we'll keep that in one window and then we'll go over to what's called slushpool.com. Slushpool is going to allow you to use your resources and put it with a lot of other people's at this point. It's a little over 110,000 um, other miners um, on this particular website. So um, that's that's a lot. So good, good chance of finding a coin. Um, you have to basically create an account. So the upper right hand corner, just like every other website, simply create an account. Remember what the username is. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, definitely recommend writing it down. Um, putting up the server addresses for Slushpool um, in case you need them. And next part we're going to be clicking on is once you've created yours, crypt your uh, email, you're going to go back to the website and there's a section uh, for workers. So you need to create a worker and you can call it whatever you like. Um, mine's just simply worker one. Um, it doesn't make a difference what it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that information because it's gonna be worker run. Now you have a, a login ID um, and it's under, you can see here, the workers section. So once we've got this part done, so to do that, you're just gonna create a um, new worker. So new worker here, no, no, um, no craziness here, pretty easy. All right, so we're gonna go back to our miner software. The miner software is the same. So you left it all, left it back where it was. Um, so we're just gonna click miner configuration software. All right, and then you're just gonna simply copy and paste from the website, or you can do it from the video and just type it in if you want, um, exactly as it was. Now I have a US based one, because I'm in the US. As a backup, I have the European version and then the Chinese. So I have all three, should one fail, it will resort to the other. The password does not make a difference. You can type in literally whatever you like. It is completely open with Slushpool. Um, remember I told you to save your user ID, whatever you created, mine in this case, Crazy Clover, for whatever reason. And then you put a dot and then whatever the worker name that you created is. And that's how you get this thing to connect. So on the very next screen, uh, we're going to have something kind of neat. So now we can go to minor status, which is the next tab over from minor configuration, the screen you were just in. Um, it will take just a few seconds and it will start to generate hashes. Um, and in this point, this one's been running for one day, 17 hours, 38 minutes. Um, it has had 51,000 um, transactions accepted. 
a um, couple rejected, discarded because non-use duplicates, that kind of thing. And then you have your hardware issue because we have this and this. So the little Lexes, we have a little problem with that particular hashing board, which is why you're only seeing a whopping 4.2 instead of 4.7. I also have uh, the frequency this particular miner was tested at was 700. It came out of the box at 650 and had some issues. We moved it to 700. Um, as the spec said, it was tested at 700 and turned the fan down to 50%, and it runs between 50 and 53 pretty much throughout the day. Um, the middle one always gets a little hotter, probably because we have some issues with some of the boards. But there you have your miner is set up and ready to go. And, you know, it didn't take entirely too long. You're talking about five minutes, you know, plus time to go ahead and do it. Once you have your miner actually set up and you know that it's hashing, go back and give it a few minutes, go back into slush pool and click on dashboard. You Right now you're on probably worker, so go to the left of it, click on dashboard. It's right here. Click on dashboard. All right, and it's gonna show you what it's doing and it's gonna break down, you know, five minutes, hour, and day. And then it'll actually tell you, depending on what you have your payout threshold set at, as to how long it's gonna take to generate that payout. In my particular case, it's 0 0.01, that's the default. You can change it to 0 0.001, um, but they do take 0 0.0001 as a higher commission for the lower payout because of cost. So. Um, that is how you set it up. It's not terribly hard if everything goes to plan. If you watched the first video, we had some issues with the miner initially, but we got through them. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, guys.